Hi, Alejandro. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to doing an interview with me and congratulations. Thank you very much. So you've just been accepted at USC class of 2024. And this was your yeah, dream school. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The only one I applied to. The only school you applied to, which yeah. is crazy. I generally don't recommend <laughs> people do that but it worked out so well for you I'm so happy for you so just let's let's take it from the top just what what's your stats when did you graduate from dental school and where are you from and let's start from there okay I'm from Chile which is located in South America next mm -hmm. to Argentina and I graduated in 2017 2017 and you're still in Chile yeah I'm still in Chile so you've been working since then till now as a dentist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was your GPA? What was your TOEFL score? Did you take part both parts of the boards? Do you have any failed attempts? Okay, I have no failed attempts. I took part one and two. My GPA is around 3.4, 3.5. Mm -hmm. What else did you ask besides that? TOEFL my TOEFL score was terrible, in my opinion. It was 96. Mm. I was scoring, yeah, I was scoring like uh, 105 or 4 in my essays, you know, practicing. But mm. I don't know what went wrong, but well, that's only a part, you know, of all the application mm -hmm. and it went really good. And the big, big news was like USC had a policy policy about if you didn't have um, a, a minimum 100 mm -hmm. you had to retake the TOEFL test or if uh, by, by the time you joined university you didn't have that score you will have to go to their mm -hmm. um, to their uh, the English school and that mm -hmm. stuff but I, I had a long talk with Corey Berry Mm. which is a guy from admission mm -hmm. and he told me like no 96 is good you are close enough you don't have to do that mm -hmm. so yeah that was a big relief because oh, you know shuffle so shuffle takes so much so much time mm -hmm. and yeah it's not a good thing yeah yeah totally so okay i'm so glad that worked out for you so you have uh, work experience as a dentist studying 2017 do you have any research experience uh i have research experience at I don't have any formal mm -hmm. published uh, published uh, paper, but I have I have two that we were we, we presented at the E I I no no let me let me spell this good I A D R you know that convention mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I have two papers presented at that conference, but we didn't publish it this because we had problems with the with our teacher with the leading mm -hmm. teacher of that mm -hmm. investigation so gotcha. i have yeah i have I, I don't have a formal research but i have experience and a lot mm -hmm. of ideas and then mm -hmm. that's why that's one of the reasons why i choose usc mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of their research area right 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 and we'll get to that in just a moment um and you do you have community service experience and what kind of u.s experience do you have if any u.s experience um let's say it's not like formal shadowing but mm -hmm. you know i'm matthew nijard's mentee mm -hmm. so i have been in her in his practice watching biomimetic dentistry it's like shadowing but it's not like certified it's it's just uh, just that mm -hmm. and i have to uh, see courses Mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. David Alamer, Matthew Nijad, and that stuff, but mm -hmm, only mm -hmm. that. Okay, so not formally, but you have a little bit of, a, a little bit here and there. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, anything else in your resume, your candidacy that I missed? Mm, how could be community service. I have been, I have been working from the, for the Red Cross here in Chile. Mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. that kind of community service oh yeah certainly is uh -huh. yeah from and you have your own practice else. yeah kind of i mean it's i i don't own that practice mm -hmm. but i work by myself it's a, a 
friends practice from mm. the university. So it's like I, I pay a fee per mm. hour to him. And that's all. I see my patients. I do and if, uh, everything by myself. Mm-hmm. So you're it's like I'm my own boss. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. All right. So yeah. So that's your background. And you decide to come to the US and you want yeah. to get a license here. Yeah. And yeah. for you, USC was special. Can you just share briefly yeah. why? Okay. It's just one reason uh, they have the father of biomagnetic dentistry, which is Pascal Magnier. Mm-hmm. He's a professor there. And I would love to do research with him, learn aesthetics and more in depth of in the more in depth the field of biomagnetic dentistry. That that's the only reason. And the other one, I could say I love Los Angeles. Mm. I love California. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the main reason. The first time I was there, I fell in love with that city. Mm. I, I, it's It was like, oh my God, I feel like home. Mm. It feels like home. So I have to, I have to move here. Mm. That was in 2018. The first time I went to a course there okay. in October. Would you say for you then, the main reason for applying to USC was because you wanted to be in USC versus you wanted to become, let's say, a US licensed dentist just in general? Can you repeat that question? I, I yeah, didn't, yeah. Didn't get it. Like for you, the purpose really was like you really wanted to go to USC. That was more important for you. It wasn't necessarily that you wanted to become a U.S. licensed dentist by going to any school. Like you didn't really. Yeah, no. I mean, I mean, it's it's like more an ethics stuff. Like you know, uh, biomagnetic dentistry talks about uh, uh, teeth structure preservation. So most of schools keep teaching classic dentistry or traditional dentistry with let's say cut a lot for crowns mm-hmm. and whenever you cut for a crown you kill a tooth mm-hmm. and it, it, it's i mean it's science evidence uh and i don't i mean i have been practicing that kind of stuff for almost five years and mm-hmm. it's like i can't prep for a crown that kind of stuff you know i know i'm doing the best thing um back it up by evidence so it's like if you have been practicing something for that long and it worked for you, you are not going to practice anything else. If mm-hmm. you have the chance to go to USC, mm-hmm. you can keep practicing your own stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's the main reason. And yeah, so you you had that principle and you have um, yeah. you have only applied to USC, which was incredible and incredibly gutsy. Now <laughs> It's awesome. It's crazy, guys. Don't do that. Don't do that. I think for you, it worked out. It's it's very rare that a candidate has a very specific reason they want to go to one school and one school only, right? You had that. It wasn't just like, oh, I live in SoCal or, you know, it wasn't anything like that. You like SoCal, sure. But I mean, there was also Loma and UCLA, which you did not apply to. So that was certainly, um, while it was a factor, like, but it was like a bonus, right? It wasn't like, I'm going to apply to only LA schools even. But for you, you just had such a clear, a clear vision in terms of the dentistry you wanted to practice and therefore the school that suited you because that's the dentistry you've already been practicing for, for many years. So it did make sense. Um, yeah, so tell me about your applications. How did you prepare your papers? You know, it's a, so I, I, I mean, I'm going to guess like when you're applying to just one school, it is a little bit easier in that you don't have to keep in track of 10 other schools, application requirements and all the supplemental essays, but still you had to put together a cap application and you had to write your personal statement and prepare your letters and all this. So tell me how you went about that. Okay, I got professional help. I didn't know International Dentist Central, so which okay. is a, guy, a very known guy that helps people to prepare everything related to the CAPID um, application. So mm. that, that's why my, that's 
that's my, I mean, that's what I can say from my uh, application. That mm -hmm. I helped me a lot. Mm, okay, so you felt like it was super, super helpful for you. Yeah, that's yeah. excellent. That's Very excellent. professional services. Right, right. Okay, you didn't know about us back then. No, no, I didn't. <gasps> that's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, I remember when I received the um, invitation from USC interview, mm -hmm. you, I think you or Kevin posted mm -hmm. uh, something on the, you know, the group on, on Facebook. And mm -hmm. I saw that and I said like, mm, seems legit. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't think things twice, you know, mm -hmm. I see that and I want that. Mm -hmm all right so okay so you work with him to get all your papers prepared were you able to put in your applications well ahead of the timeline like were you rushed yeah you no I didn't rush mm. I just started to do that thing I mean it was like last year no I mean 2020 mm -hmm. the end of 2020 I started to look okay what what do I mm -hmm. what do I need for my application let's say the WES reports uh MBE reports TOEFL what else what else so mm -hmm. yeah I had almost everything prepared so after mm -hmm. that I just had to prepare my personal statement the letter of recommendations mm -hmm. and all that stuff so yeah but i mean but by the deadline everything was was organized mm -hmm. and uploaded to the website yeah if you started at the end of the year before the application you were you yeah, were pretty yeah. well ahead of the timeline especially if you were just applying to one school so you did you did that well okay so you put in your applications and then you got your interview invitation yeah and then and the interview because of still covid <laughs> it was not an in-person interview everything was virtual and so yeah, there was, everything was weird yeah yeah and they called a lot of people like a lot yeah, of people 260 many? people to be exact yeah and, and no no i mean no bench test mm -hmm. i have been working a lot almost five years and that's a lot compared to other applicants mm -hmm. i could have um, had any advantage over them if i will had a bench test though it was very weird mm -hmm. i don't know how they select people to be honest yeah they're trying yeah, you, right everybody's just doing their best yeah so they invited 260 people which is yeah but, i'd say over double what they would usually do if it was yeah, an but, in person but mm -hmm. they invited more than that but a lot of people reject the invitation i mm -hmm. was on the wait list from mm -hmm. the invitations you know okay. yeah i was in two wait lists <laughs> okay. it's super crazy it's super crazy yeah you were on the interview invitation wait list. That's where that started. Yeah. Now, how long before the actual interview date did you get your actual like invitation? Okay. I don't remember the dates, but I remember they sent the first batch mm -hmm. on Monday, I think. And mm -hmm. on Friday, the same week, they sent the second batch mm -hmm. and I, I received my invitation in the second one. Ah, uh, okay. So it was just like less than a week after yeah so you were on the top of the wait list kind of like a top towards the top batch of the wait list okay yeah. so you, you get your invitation and how did you prepare what, what what kind of components i don't want you to necessarily talk about the details and specifics of what was in the interview because i'm not sure if anything was proprietary for the school so i don't want to get into that kind of territory but what kind of components just largely speaking was there for the interview and how did you for go about example? that like example, there was a PBL, right? There was a there mm -hmm. was a there was a PBL and yeah, there, the MM, MMI. There was an MMI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those two, all of those two. Yeah, and and that was it. Yeah, that, that's it. It's, I told you, it's weird. <laughs> I mean, it must be hard to really evaluate candidates based on yeah. Based on just I those mean, two things. I mean, I I I wouldn't 
evaluate candidates only based on that. Mm -hmm. But okay, if you do the math, mm -hmm. each applicant was paying like 500 and they got like 2000. So yeah. with all the money, yeah, I could try. If you give me a piece of that, I could try. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> okay, so you get your invitation and how did you go about mm -hmm. your preparation of that? Well, my preparation was based on your, your course. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all, everything. Only that. Mm, okay, just, yeah, you, you worked with us um, through USC Mastery. If I remember yeah. correctly, my memory is a little bit fuzzy now. But you also did like a personal session, yeah, kind of upgrade kind of One thing. One personal right? session, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And we you prepared did, that too. Yeah, I remember you worked very hard on everything. So, because uh, yeah. I mean, this this was like your one and only, <laughs> yeah, thing, and, and and that really did show. Okay, so you worked with us through that, and um, did did you feel like the did you did you feel like the program prepared you well for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was more. It's, it's not. It's like the program works for you. Like it's a confidence boost mm -hmm. because of you know the PBO at uh, mock up um, the MMI questions. So you you have a pretty solid idea of mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, you know, this year I told you they they asked about um, dental questions, mm -hmm. browsed questions. So my university was was like, I remember my university prepares you better in, you know, in the browsed area. So mm -hmm. questions were, were super easy for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, it was like half um, dental questions and half situation questions. Mm -hmm. I, I think we had a, we had a meeting. Yeah that we, we were talking about that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the PBO was lucky for me. I had a, like um, Dr. Tura, mm -hmm. which is one of the, I mean, it's the leading professor, maybe director of the dental school. So mm -hmm. that that's a big point for me because mm -hmm. her work is like, you know, the most important. So I will say if you had, Corey Berry, which is the guy from admission, or Dr. Tura, in your PDL as a moderator, you were one step ahead. Mm -hmm. and, in, and within the PBO, I just followed the, all the recommendations you gave me. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, everything in the group was in my WhatsApp, and they told me, like, okay, you did great, you, were, you, you, you was the best guy there, so you will get there for for sure mm -hmm. so why do you think i got on the wait list mm -hmm. you got on because the wait list they, and not accepted right away <laughs> yeah because the other two girls were oh my god crazy more the curriculum the cv was way better than mine mm -hmm. i know that the the, uh, the gpa was higher uh they had more experience within us and mm -hmm. i think that's a very important thing mm -hmm. yeah and i think one of the girls had a master mm -hmm. and you can't compete with that but you know at the end of the day i mean and, and that's what really matters i mean it worked but yeah that's actually a very important point because you got an interview invitation because they were interested in you, but that does not erase your candidacy. That does not put everybody on the exact same starting line. It's just that you you do get to meet them, but the final like acceptance, your candidacy counts for some portion and then your interview part counts for some portion and then everything comes together and there comes your acceptance Yeah, I mean, I mean Cor Corey Berry told me like, okay, we more rely so on the PBO and MMAI, you know, mm -hmm. that's all. But if, but maybe if we want to make a, a hard decision, we go back and look out your recommendation letters, mm -hmm. personal statement and all, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
that's the way they select the candidates. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, now here you are. You just got your acceptance a few days ago. Yeah, a few days looks like five days, maybe. Oh my goodness. So this was your first and only cycle, right? You have not applied before yeah. either. No, never. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations. If you have any advice for other candidates that are considering, you know, or that are applying or going through this process and are stressed out and don't know what to do, have any advice for, for them? Yeah, they just have to write down everything, relax. It's a long process. I had success at the first try, but maybe not everybody is going to make it at the first one yeah so save money yeah everyone can save money it's so easy this is a good advice listen jewish people you know a lot of jewish people owns a lot of big businesses because mm -hmm. for them whenever they born they are taught like you have to save 30 percent of your money income. It's like they take that money and they put that in another account and that money doesn't exist. So mm -hmm. they had to live with the 70%. So by the time a years passed, you have a lot of money. So whenever you have money, you tend to make more, you tend to buy stuff, you know, but always you find a way to live with what you have. So that's one way to save money. And for this process, you will need a lot of money because each document costs no less than $100. Yeah. You no, know? that's a big thing. It costs yeah. a lot of money. So everyone has to do the math. Um, papers, documents, um, you need to have them very organized, uh, not close to the timeline, the deadline. Mm -hmm. uh, just maybe two months ahead of the time and uh, never lose faith. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing. Yeah. yeah, You have to keep working hard. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? And that's all. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story today. And congratulations yeah. again. I'm so excited yeah, for I you. Yeah, I hope to share my thoughts whenever I start my classes, you know, on all that stuff. We can keep talking. That'll be awesome. We can, yeah, we can do live uh, live stuff for your for your students, maybe of the course, you know. Sure. So I can I can talk to them about the university, the good stuff, the bad stuff, all that thing. That sounds that sounds like fun. Yeah. Well, thank Good you. Time. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Congratulations. Good luck with your move. And uh, yeah, we'll certainly keep in touch.